Thinking of RV ownership? Want to see our beautiful country? Want to be part of the RV lifestyle? Want to learn more? Do you want the freedom? Do you want to travel? Do you want to explore? Then join us at RV Talk Radio. Proudly sponsored by RV Lock. Hey everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. I'm Rob Scribner. Really nice to have you on the show today. Ah, uh, we got a couple of things going on, I think. Somebody's waiting for us to announce what the contest winner is for the RV Lock. And also today's major subject is going to be RV Love. And we'll talk about that a little later. We have truly enjoyed having people on our new RV Talk group community on Facebook and we've been getting some really good comments, been getting all kinds of feedback and it's been uh, lots of fun. And I just want to remind you if you're new to the show, we uh, and you get a chance to go to Facebook, go into the search area and type in RV Talk Radio, separate words, and you'll see that we have an RV Talk Radio community. And if you'd like to join our community, just go in there, say you want to join. We'll be happy to have you as long as you're RV oriented and you can talk about what you're doing in your RV. If you have products or services, we don't mind a bit as long as you're tactful and you stay on subject with RV related articles and news. We also want to remind folks that RV Talk Radio is a great format for advertising your products and services. So we're always looking for advertisers and sponsors. If you have some stories or you have a channel or Facebook or uh, or a podcast that you're trying to advertise and you'd like to be interviewed by RV Talk Radio, you can contact us from the website at RV Talk Radio at the contact page. Or you can contact us on Facebook, of course. And you can go to also, if you want to be interviewed for... RV Travel Buddy, Um, same thing, just go to the contact page, and most of all, if you want to talk to me personally, just email Rob, R-O-B, at RVTalkRadio.com. Well, it's time to announce who the winner is, and I have not contacted them yet, so I wanted to get it from the, the show, and... It, their Facebook name is, you ready? Here it comes. Dun, 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 dun. Ruth LaBoundry Brainer. The Bounty. So Ruth LaBounty dash Brainer. And I'll go to the web, uh, their Facebook page and contact them and let them know that they are the winner of a new, brand new RV lock with an extra remote. And as soon as we get their address and, and contact them, we will get it sent out to them and we'll have another contest later. Congratulations, Ruth. You will love the new RV lock. Sherry and I, we, we have ours. We've had no issues with it whatsoever. It's just been nice. We've been locking up the rig a little more. Uh, we even actually forgot our keys once and we just used the keyless entry. It's just a wonderful system. You'll love it. And we, uh, for those folks who'd like to get their own RV lock, don't forget, down below in the description, we have a lock um, discount that is just for our listeners. You click on the link, use our code, and you will save $54.99. So if you want one and you want to save some money, I don't know how long that discount will last. You better go for it. Once again... Congratulations, Ruth. Boy, it's been a nice pleasure to work with RV Lock, and we're really glad to have them for a sponsor. The first thing I'd like to talk about today is RV travel, RV people, and RV blogs, RV YouTube channels, and I want to talk about what you're seeing on YouTube. First of all, 
and I've said this several times before, maybe every hundred RVers, maybe every 1,000 RVers, maybe one or two of them do a blog or a YouTube channel or have a photography site pertaining to RV travel. And the reason I bring that up is you're not getting the majority of what's going on. And so what I want to do with this show is remind you that, especially with YouTube, is it's only a show. That's right. Now, yeah, we're, we're all of us are giving you the best reports we can in, in entertainment, but YouTube is a show. And the reason I say that, and I'm not saying it in a bad way, but I, you also got to remember that you're only seeing a fraction or pieces of our lives. I'm talking about me and Sherry. I'm talking about any of the other shows out there. I don't care if they're old timers or young folks or whatever. It's a show. And the reason it's a show, because first of all, they, they are trying to share their lives. But you're not seeing what the real life of being in an RV full time is like. We all try our best to show you bits and pieces, but until you actually live it, you'll never really comprehend it. I'm not saying this is good or bad. I just want to make sure that when people make this big decision to go full-timing, whether they're a young couple, middle-aged couple, or retiring, that they personally do their own tests it's so different for every couple, every individual. You have so many different vertebrals. Whether it's you may have health issues, you may have pets and animals. You, if you're a younger couple, you may have kids. You may be folks that just became empty nesters. Everybody's life. Maybe you're single. Maybe you're um, uh, a partnered couple. It's going to be different. Some people don't like to be in close quarters. Some people want to move a lot. Some want to just stay still. It just goes on and on and on. And so all these RV shows, these uh, YouTube channels you're seeing, are very educational, there's no doubt. And it's really fun to see the shows that we're, sh we're doing. But you have to remember they are shows. And the reason I say that is most YouTube channels that are going... Uh, well and, and getting good followers and stuff is because they're following a marketing um, wisdom which is that's good um, because when we do a show it's important that we try to retain you and we get more subscribers and and we're also a lot of us are using our YouTube channels that earn a little bit of extra money and not, we're not talking about big money at all but in order to do that, <coughs> there's some require well not require well there's requirements of following the rules like don't use copyrighted music and things like that, and it's got to be tactful. Uh, the other thing is we try to do good presentations that keep the viewer entertained, and I'm using the word entertained. That's one of the reasons why you see us use intros and outros and good endings, and we try to keep our videos within. 10 minutes on the average unless we really have a big report to do uh, those are presentations they're fixed we put some thought behind them every show that everybody does on a regular basis is doing a show we're trying to report and we're all trying to report the most uh, accurate information as possible and to also get the chuckles of what it's like to live here and stuff but I mean after the, the camera is off you know, those couples could be fighting or after the uh, uh, they lose a tool or something else breaks, uh, I'm sure that they're not quite as charming. Things happen and, and people have real lives. And so it's just, I just want to remind everybody that if you're interested in RVing and you want to consider full timing or maybe just snowbirding, you have to test test it on your own you have to get an RV you need to test a couple of trips together do some extended traveling 
you need to find out if you're tolerable, if you can tolerate be, with being with your partner in close quarters. Are you willing to fix things? Um, are you prepared to pay for mechanics and repairs? It's, it's a whole lot of things that people don't tell you about. So this brings me to what I want to talk about. And the subject is RV love. <laughs> the meaning of RV love to a full timer is everything you do, you have to keep in mind that you need to be thinking about the RV most of the time. And I say that in a way of like taking care of a child or taking care of a pet or a cat or a bird or whatever you might have. The RV needs to have that same thoughtfulness, that same concern. Are you treating the RV well? Is the RV healthy? Are you exercising the RV? Are you ma maintaining the RV? If you don't have that in mind all the time, then you're going to have problems being a full timer. Do you have the equipment, the tools, the knowledge, the resources you need to be an owner of an RV? Just like a pet or just like having children, you need to support your RV. So part of becoming a, a full timer isn't just buying an RV and start going. You need to think ahead, just like a child or, or, or animals. Do they need to go to school? Do they need doctor's appointments? Uh, do they need books and clothes, etc.? Well, the same thing with RVs. You need to sit down and really think through, are the tires good? Are they going to last for a year or two years? How's my warranty? Do I have the tools? Do I have all the things I might need to babysit or take care of my RV? Because if my RV goes down, we got a problem. It's my home. So before you start RVing, do watch the shows that we've been talking about. Yes, and they are shows, but they will give you at least a little insight of what it's like to own an RV. And you'll notice that things break. I mean, things that you can't imagine, whether sometimes it's a vehicle related tires, axles, to appliances. What are you going to do? What if your refrigerator goes out? What if your microwave breaks? What if your heater stops working? What if uh, you're having gas problems? What if you got a water leak? What are you going to do? And this isn't to make you worry. It's just the fact is RVs break. I don't care if we're talking about a new rig or a couple of years or very old. Every single one of them will break. To verify this, I've owned two brand new RVs. I've owned a 40 foot Fleetwood Discovery uh, 2007. I bought brand new. That was one of my biggest nightmares. And I thought that kind of stuff through and we had a, a warranty on it and thank goodness we did. I mean, I like the, the RV, but I always had to keep in mind, am I going to break this thing? So an, uh, another, I had a uh, 2006, so I had a fifth wheel. Once again, we bought that brand new and we had problems with a cracked tank. Once again, the warranties covered all that, but we also had to uh, keep in mind that we had to stay close to the area, get the parts ordered. We were living in the RV. Uh, you just got to think that thing, that's kind of stuff through. So when I talk about RV love, when, <laughs> your RV is going to be like a family member. And so when you're driving it, when you're navigating, you have to think ahead. Are you taking the RV into a safe place? Uh, for example, if you're going to go up to Alaska, 
will your RV sustain that kind of uh, abuse? The roads aren't good up there and the weather is crazy. Are you going to be someplace where there's going to be snow and freezing? What have you done prior to that to be prepared for those situations? Like freezing temperatures. Did you buy the right kind of hoses? Did you buy heaters? Did you buy uh, coils? Uh, do you have winterization um, stuff that you need to... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> stuff to be prepared for anything. So that's what I'm talking about is thinking ahead. Thinking about the resources you might need. So it's really wise to sit down, you and your partner, or if it's just you, and say, what if? What if I had a flat tire? What would we do? What if we broke a t uh, an axle? What if we're out in the middle of nowhere and we had an engine go down? Or we stalled or we overheated? What would we do? I'm not saying you have to fix it. I'm asking, what would you do? Maybe you need to say, well, let's make sure we have a AAA membership or a good SAM uh tire service just go through everything that you think could happen what if I have a water leak what would I do do I have things to seal cracks do I have ways to um, temporarily fix things do I have tools what if our refrigerator stopped working how would we deal with that what if my microwave stopped working what if the shower broke what if we cracked one of our tanks could I temporarily fix it till I got somewhere? What if the truck breaks? What if um, my motorhome engine acts up? You'd need to sit down and talk about each scenario and ask yourself, how would we or how would I handle the situation? And let's get things in place now instead of being too late when it actually happens. It's better to be preventative and safe than it is to be caught in a place that you're not familiar with, in an area that you don't know, in a state that may not have some of the same regulations or some of the same states that won't recognize your warranty. Those things you need to play it all out in your head, write it down, get a plan. I'm just telling you, you need to love your RV. And this just doesn't apply to like just mechanical things. When you have an RV, there's things you can do to protect it. So a lot of people think about this when you're in an RV. So, and let's let's use Sherry and my um, scenario. We're in Washington State, and it's actually late in the year, November, and it's been raining. So outside of our RV everything's wet and dirty and muddy so we're tracking in mud all the time then sometimes we've had our RV down in Central Oregon and there you're dealing with uh, cheat grass and red rock that gets tracked into your RV and can mark up your floors and etc then you can be in other places up in the Northwest where there's lots of pine needles and you'll track pine needles into your RV and then if you get down to Central Oregon or even lower down towards uh, Nevada or Arizona, you're dealing with dust and dirt and rocks and red rock. And it just goes on and on. And you're tracking that stuff into your RV all the time. So another thing to consider is different kinds of rugs. How are you going to maintain your rugs? How are you going to maintain your floors? What can you do to prevent damage? Do you have chairs that could damage the floor when they've been scooped? I had that problem before. Um, what about your animals? Do you have a cat? Do you think maybe they could mark up the furniture? What would you do to prevent that? Is there covers you can put on? Is, once again, can you protect your floors? Do you have the way to clean the carpets? Do you have the way to vacuum in different in, in tight spaces? What are you going to do about spiders? And what are you going to do about cobwebs? What if you get uh, bugs in the RV? What are you going to do? Is your RV sealed up enough to protect you from mice and rodents? It just goes on and on and on. And it's no different than having a child. It's no different than having a pet. You care about your pet and you need to care about your RV and your tow vehicle. 
what I'm talking about is if you like RVing, then you need to love your RV. Just like your partner, you don't necessarily have to love your partner so much, but you need to like it. And if it's another word for, if you don't want to love your RV, you can like your RV, but no matter what, you have a responsibility to keep it up. If you do not, if you do not follow what I'm talking about, RVing will be a nightmare to you. If you're not willing to get your hands dirty once in a while or learn how to change a light bulb or learn how to seal a hole or um, do some uh, you know, preventative things to keep from damaging your RV, first of all, it won't last very long for you. And two, you're going to be spending a lot of money having professionals fix it. Yeah, I know I sound kind of cranky. I, I'm not trying to be. I really, really enjoy our RV. Sherry and I just moved into our RV full time. We can't travel yet because we're finishing up our retirement scenario, so we can. But it's been great to be in our RV to find out what problems we've had. And we've had a couple. Uh, you heard on the show last week we're having problems with the refrigerator. Oh my lord, we tried everything. We got on the internet. We went through um, tutorials of how to test it. We put fans in it. We made sure we leveled the RV better. We unplugged the thermostat. We did all kinds of things and nothing worked. So Sherry and I, we actually went out and bought a little uh, 2.7 cubic foot refrigerator to use kind of a temporary because we figure uh, it'll come in handy to have a little backup for storing water and, and pop and stuff and it, we had a place to put it so we had something at least you know keep uh, some milk cold and, and our pop cold and have ice cubes and so we just shut off the big refrigerator thinking we're gonna have to go to camping world make arrangements to go up there live on the property while they fix our refrigerator and Lord knows how much that's going to cost. And I was kind of disappointed in myself because I did all the tests to try to eliminate what the problem could be and I'd fix it. And, and I want to fix it and I want to learn how to do this stuff. But I was, I just was not making any headway. So we made the appointment to take it up the camping world. So we shut the refrigerator off, totally shut it off. And so the following day, I came home from work and Sherry works too and I was gonna think I'm gonna turn this thing on and see if it works well it turns out Sherry turned it on in the morning and so I opened the door and realized I saw a little bit of frost in the freezer and I'm like what and we also purchased one of those point-and-shoot um, temperature gauges uh, with a laser in it so it makes it a lot easier to so I pull out the little laser uh, temperature gauge point it in the in the freezer part and what do I see zero degrees perfect go to the other freezer it's a four door perfect it's like four degrees I point down in the lower half it's 32 degrees perfect it's like what <laughs> I don't know I, I, it, I didn't do anything so it turns out, and I don't know if this is true, I don't know if I want to say this is true or not, but there was also a few comments out there saying that the Norcode had a recall and has some problems, but they also said that there's such a thing as burping. I know it sounds funny, burping your refrigerator. And the way you do it is you shut it off and turn it back on 24 to 48 hours later. Well, we didn't go that long. so we could have possibly burped <laughs> yeah burped our refrigerator which i think what it is is probably gets like a um a air bubble or uh kind of like a fuel lock in a car it might have had something like that happen because we didn't do anything weird like shake the rig or anything or turn it upside down or anything we just shut it off and turn it on after a period of time and it's working perfectly knock on wood so, you know, we kind of don't trust it right away yet, but it's been consistent, been working. We're putting a few things in it, and we'll kind of watch how it goes. But that's what I mean about RV love. 
Do we have an old RV? Nope, it's a pretty new one. We have extended warranty? Yep. But, once again, I'm not the big greatest mechanic. I certainly can't put an engine together or anything like that. But I've been RVing long enough to know that I've got to learn how to change a pipe, fix a wire. Um, and I have some mechanical experience in electrical from the place I used to work. So I'm just saying you have to be a little bit mechanically inclined and willing to learn new things from septic tanks, your holding tank getting backed up and finding the processes to unclog one. No, it's not a fun subject, but yes, you got to do it. And the other thing, Sherry and I, we had a slide that started leaking and it was, happened to be the one in the bedroom. Luckily, this particular slide has no pipes, no electrical. It's just a slide to the bed. <clears throat> But in one corner, it has water. We have no idea where the water is coming from. So once again, we watch lots of tutorials, lots of videos, trying to find a way. And it's cold right now. And we actually had, and this happened this week. <coughs> and uh, it's not a lot of water, but we have a big uh, storm coming in. And we have to be ready. So we took the day off yesterday because there was partially, partly sunny here. We cleaned we actually pulled the slide in and we worked on it from the inside any seam whatsoever we use that new liquid vinyl um, it's as seen on TV stuff that stuff's awesome by the way and you can get it at Lowe's and it's like $12 a, a can but it's a spray vinyl and we used the clear so it looked nice and anything that had a seal on it and everything looked great by the way there's no cracks this is a fairly new RV we resealed everything and uh, tried to asphyxiate ourselves as best as possible. We made sure and uh, checked the seals and used the liquid vinyl around the, the windows to make sure that there isn't something leaking through the windows. And uh, then we uh, waited for a while, slid it back out, got up on the rig and then did all the seals on the outside of anything that overlapped itself even though they look like they're in great shape and they've been sealed really well we sealed them again so we just bombarded that thing and, and we're not even sure yet if we fixed it but once again it's teamwork Sherry and I got together we have to be Mr. and Mrs. Mechanic and get out there and do our best to fix it or we have to take it to a rig be really to a, a shop be really inconvenienced and drop a lot of money to have something that we could do for $12.95 in our time. So once again, we love our RV, we're very comfortable, but we also know that we have to stand up, take responsibility, and maintain our RV. Other things people need to consider is what kind of climate are you gonna be in? Are you gonna be in a hot climate, wet climate, freezing climates? And once again, those are things that are a factor of protecting or loving your RV. So you probably want to consider getting covers for your tires because hot weather is extremely hard on rubber and can break down and weaken your tires. You may want to, I mean, we were talking about the inside before with all the extra rugs and things to protect your, your carpets, but the outside needs protection too. If you're going to be in hot temperatures for a long period of time, maybe you want to treat the top of your roof with a UV protectant. Um, try to imagine, okay, you're going to be in hot temperatures in the summer and you're going to be running your air conditioning a lot. Are your air conditioners in good shape? Have they been uh, maintained? Maybe you want a backup. So, for example, Sherry and I think we may be in... Arizona during the summer with this RV and I certainly do not want both of my RVs running 24 um, both of my air conditioners running 24 7 so we're gonna actually buy a third air conditioner upright that you can attach to your window and and, and rotate my air conditioners to have less wear and tear on them and if one breaks down it's not the end of the world because remember I have pets and you saw our precious cinder our chocolate lab and we have a kitty named Lily and they are just as, as important to us as our RV is 
And so if our air conditioner goes down, I need to make sure that our animals are safe and they won't be hurt. So I'm actually going to put a third air conditioner in our uh, fifth wheel. It's probably an overkill. Yep, probably. But I'll sleep better at night. And I, if I, some reason we're, uh, uh, I plan on doing some vol volunteer work and go work with uh, um, unfortunate folks um, in different organizations, and I'll be gone, and the animals will be in the RV alone. And it's my responsibility that this RV is running at at its peak, and to imagine what could go wrong when I'm gone. And so that's one I'm really worried about. So that's what I mean by you need to love your RV as much as you love your partner, as much as you love your animals and pets, uh, including your vehicle if you have a tow vehicle. And anything that's in the outside, uh, whether it's bicycles, they should be covered, um, especially in the back racks, uh, things that you can do to protect your hitch, um, depending on if you're in a lot of, it uh, doesn't matter where you're at, but think ahead, ask yourself, okay, I'm in cold temperatures now, what should I, uh, what should I have ahead of time? And if I'm not sure, get on the internet, start watching videos and say, winter in an RV and believe me you'll see videos like crazy or hot temperatures in an RV and you'll hear all kinds of stories uh, the other thing I know I've talked about rodents but but insects oh my goodness what are you gonna do if you get sugar ants what happens if you get infested with ladybugs what are you gonna do what if you get a mouse what are the things you can do what kind of preventative things you can do. For example, Sherry and I, all of our uh, heating vents actually have a uh, screening behind them. Uh, the same kind of screen that you see uh, on your screen door. Every input and output of our heating system has screens behind it to prevent critters from getting in or out because that's a weak point. Every piece of wire every piece of plumbing that's in our RV is either sealed with wool steel wool or we used a, uh, a foam insulation that nothing can penetrate those openings uh, you get down to Arizona you're gonna have critters of all types in, including scorpions uh, black widows and um, cockroaches <laughs> <laughs> those are not fun to find in your bed so anyway once again that's maybe it's an overkill but uh, thinking ahead of the worst scenarios well I think Sherry and I have done our best job at putting in preventative things into our RV to help prevent terrible things like that and you can get that education from watching some of these great RV channels, and I hope one of ours is one of them, but uh, there's great, great resources out there. And the last thing I want to mention is climate and driving. A lot of folks need to remember that if you're from different regions, you have to respect those regions' climate issues. For example, like a Washingtonian like myself, we don't totally understand crosswinds that much or flash flooding, uh, certain types of storms that occur in different regions because when we have flooding and things like that, we typically, our water stays in, in, the, in the rivers. They go over their banks sometimes, but nothing like the washes down in Arizona or, or Nevada and places like that and crosswinds and, and, and certain types of storms and stuff up here uh, torrential rain is a danger so my last thing I would suggest is if you love your RV and you love to live longer <laughs> respect climate and the way you do that is one is constantly watch your weather but don't try to be a tough guy or a tough gal trying to get through weather that you shouldn't be going through and the other thing is 
if you're putting yourself on such a tight schedule to put yourself in danger because you have to be at a certain place at a certain time and you're willing to risk driving in torrential rains or dealing with high winds then you're probably gonna have some trouble so when I the last thing I want to say if you love your RV you'd also take the time to understand where you're taking your RV and protect it at the same time respect the climate and respect the regions that you're in and if you don't understand it all I'm sh RVers are nice people ask them what's it like to, to drive in South Carolina what's it like to drive in Florida what are the things you need to watch out for what if I'm up north what am I gonna do if I get in the freezing temperatures those are the things that will keep you alive to protect your RV because when I really come down to it all of us love to be RVers we love our freedom but most of all we need to love our RV So that's all we got for today's show. I want to thank you so much for listening. We really do appreciate you. Please take the time to give us your comments. Send us out your notes. Give us some articles. We love it. If you have a product or service that you'd like to advertise, please feel free to contact us. Please go to our Facebook at RV Travel Buddy or go to our new group communication or group community Facebook page for RV Talk Radio and post your pictures. Let us know all about your RV and some of your adventures. Please take the time to tell folks about us and share our videos and share our soundtracks and share our podcasts. We would appreciate that. Please be safe and like we like to say here at RV Travel Buddy and Talk Radio, what are you waiting for? Bye now. <laughs>